Mario from the Dioscovery team, and I will be presenting a Tiendo development workshop. So we basically will um, browse through the Tienda code base to give you a general idea on uh, how the component is structured. So how the controllers, models, views, components, uh, helpers, plugins works together. And after that, we'll just dive into a, a project that either you could propose. So if you have an idea for a plugin or an extension for Tienda, just propose it and we will build it in real, in real time during the workshop. Or I have a couple of ideas that I can share with you and just uh, make a living example of Tienda development. So, first thing, I have my remote, but with the Wi-Fi, it doesn't work very well, so I'll just go finally. The presentation is online, so if you reach that URL, you'll find a iwork.com link with the presentation uh, directly, I'm sorry, directly, you, uh, you can browse through the, the keynote online on the website. So, that said, let's start. We will talk about, first a brief presentation of me and the company. Who are you? What are your uh, abilities? Uh, if you have already looked at the end of code, how much? Have you already built something, etc. What are we going to build in details? Where you can find information on TN development, so where is the SVN, where is the documentation, and where you can post bugs, request help from developers, and such things. Then a brief introduction, as I explained before, on the structure or, of Tienda. Then uh, we can choose what we are going to build in this workshop, so your ideas and um, the real work. So, who am I? I am. I'm Daniele Rosario. I work for an Italian, I own uh, together with Dario, which is there, um, an Italian-based an Italian company. We work only on Joomla. We do website, e-commerce, uh, marketing, positioning, so a lot of things. And we are partners of Geoscore Design, who is a Manhattan-based design firm who has built Tienda. I'm lead developer for Tienda, so I'm pretty accustomed to it. And also, it's your birthday Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you. Free beer for ev everyone of you? Oh. Okay, so I stay in bed tomorrow morning? Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I asked if they were to, to promote the special. So, uh, how many of you are developers? Okay, perfect. Stupid question, but I'm happy to be sure. Yeah, have you already uh, done some plugins, components for Joomla? Joomla? Okay. So, for Tienda? One? What have you done? Uh, you have hacked Tienda or uh, yeah. do you? Oh, okay. Maybe that's good. that could be an example of how could we do that without hacking Tienda actually, but using a plugin of this type. Because the main thing of this workshop is uh, saying that Tienda is highly extendable. So uh, you don't need to, to actually hack Tienda and or edit it for the base for making it do something else. You, can, you could simply write plugins or modules or extensions that alters its workflow and all will be well. You could keep updating Tienda without any problems. So, uh, next slide. Okay. The framework basics of Tienda. Uh, Tienda is based on Joomla code base, so it's MVC. Uh, and all Tienda classes extends the basic uh, Joomla ones. So for example, the Tienda table classes all extends the JTable class, all the models, the JModel class, etc. 
So if you are familiar with the normal Joomla code base, you are also familiar with the concepts of TML. So models, tables, we have a lot of helpers because most of the tasks in an e-commerce are highly uh, repeatable. So I have to resize an image, I have to get the price from a product, I have to, I don't know, get the rates, the shipping rates for uh, my, my orders and such. So we have built uh, a lot of helpers which helps you with, with the statics method uh, to get your information in one line of code. And the plugins. This is a very big topic, so I'll like that for next in the presentation. Last things, um, last thing is Tienda supports template overrides completely. So everything in Tienda is template overridable from your template even the plugins, which in, in, in Joomla aren't template overridable, but for example, if you have a shipping plugin that shows XML, XML code to the users, and you don't like that code, you can rewrite it with a template override. Okay. So, projects.doscowie.com. This is the main website for TMT development. We host our public projects for Dioscory all on that website. It's a Redmine installation, so if you already use the Redmine, uh, you should be familiar with it. Uh, you can go even now for the duration of job is automatic registration. So if you just register, you should have free access to the ESPN of Tienda. It's free access for the rest of the year, so you just have to wait for uh, an administrator to approve your account. There is a dedicated space for Tienda community, so uh, in the project list you'll find several projects, one of which is Tienda, if you want you can go on right now and check out the branch if you want to start coding and don't have a, a Tienda installation package in your computer right now, uh, from the SVN branch job. I, I hope that everyone knows how to check out from the SVNs to avoid longer talks. So, Tienda Code Base. Uh, Tienda Code Base is MVC, so we have models. Every model is actually uh, an extended version of JModel. So, we have built a Tienda Model Base class which does a lot of uh, common things for all the models. The, the models are actually uh, the, mm, the most improved part uh, well, if we uh, compare them to the Joomla ones. For example, uh, we have a, um, yeah, a query builder class inside the models that allows us to uh, separate the various uh, parts of the query. So the where query, the join query, the select query are all in separate methods and stackable. So you can call query where and just call query where another in another part of the model it will just stack all the, the, the conditions and at the end you will have a complex query built automatically. I'll show, in, uh, show you an example during the coding part. Um, and the other big feature of the models are the field depths. So if you are familiar with Joomla, uh, you know that when you call a model, you can, can call set state on the model. Set states allow you to set a variable uh, inside the model that you can use on the mo in the model to query your database. So for example, the classic is you have the model for products. You have to filter products based on price. So every product from zero to 99 dollars. Uh, in Tienda you have uh, the possibility to set state on the price and the model will automatically uh, build your query on the product table to return you a list of all the products within that range. Uh, I have a few examples later. Views, these are normal Joomla views with the plate of arrive and such, so pretty much equal to a Joomla normal installation. Controllers, 
We have uh, an extended version of the controller which is similar to Joomla 1.6 version of the DJ controller class. So we have automatic edit, save, uh, add, uh, view methods for every uh, view you want without having to redeclare those methods for every class. The tables are uh, an extended version of the JTable, as always, and we uh, use them as a placeholder for helper method dedicated to particular objects, like orders. We have uh, the order table, which is the end of table orders, which, is, which loads the order from the database, as Joomla does, and allows you to uh, have some magic methods on that object to calculate taxes, calculate shipping rates, calculate uh, the total of the order, just in one minute. So you just load a, a, an order and launch a method on that particular object. Then we have helpers and plugins. Helpers, I already described them before, so it, it's just a bunch of static functions to do a, a lot of things. And plugins. For plugins, I have uh, three slides later, so I'll go on with that. Models are done. When you instantiate uh, a model, it's empty. So it doesn't have the full state, doesn't have, for, for example, if you do jmodel get instance get list, which should return you a list of all the objects, uh, it will return published and not published object in different. So no states by default. Do not interact with the request variables. So in our models, you will never find J request, get, and the name of the variable. That is handled by the controller. <coughs> I'm sorry. This is a classic example of a call to our model. <coughs> we get an instance of the uh, Tinder model products. So products is the name of the, of the model, and this is our prefix. So our models does not name J model Tienda orders, but Tienda model products. Then you can set your, your states. So you want to filter on publish, so you say, uh, I want all the products that are published, that are published after the date, uh, that are published at this date, so now, and that are enabled. So uh, when you've done that, just go get list, and this returns an array of your <coughs> of your products in the database. This also does all the joins for getting prices and extra information such as quantities uh, that are stored in other tables. In the database. Tables. This is a, an improvement on JTable. You can, uh, as you probably know, JTable doesn't allow you to load on multiple keys. So if you have a table which is classic example is an XR table. So uh, product to category is a two columns table, product ID, category ID. You should be able to uh, use them as a, a pair key couple. So the, the primary key of the table is the couple of, of uh, product ID plus category ID. And with the J table, you cannot load uh, a row based on two primary keys, but only on one. On Tienda, you can do something, something like, no, there isn't an example. Something like, I declare two different primary keys and load a row based on two <coughs> primary keys, just that one. As I said before, we have also uh, a lot of helper methods on the table. For example, for the order table, we can add products to the order class and calculate the totals automatically. So the, the order table just uh, has all the products in your order and is able to automatically calculate all the totals, taxes, shipping, subtotal, total. 
before, altars. I wanted to show you an example. Here it is. When we recite, uh, recite an image, we don't need to uh, call, I don't know, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an entire class, and then write 100 lines of code. With one call to that method, you have the image prompt.jpg resize <laughs> to the right folder where you have configured Tienda to store images with the right dimensions for the configuration file of Tienda and so This is another important part of Tienda. As you probably have already seen, uh, Tienda is huge. It has something like 40 different tables so 40 different controllers, 40 different tables or models and views. So if we had to load every class at the startup of Tienda, we have to load something like 150 classes. So it could be like a huge bunch of code just to them. And maybe you'll never use some of those classes. So what we have done is uh, build a, a dynamic loader. So when you need a class, you actually need to say to Tienda, be sure that that class is loaded. So, for example, I want to use the previous methods. So resize a product image, or get all the images of a product. To call Tienda helper product, get gather images, I have to, to be sure that Tienda helper product is in my namespace. So I simply call Tienda load the name of the class and the path uh, of the class. <coughs> the path is relative to the administration, uh, Tienda administration folder. So administrator components from Tienda. This way you avoid um, this way you avoid extra class loadings for now. Or, instead of load, you can call get, which does exactly the, exactly the same thing of load, but also instantiate the class. So it does uh, tienda load plus new or get instance, based on the type of the class. Uh, yeah. Please make questions if you have... Can you switch back, please? Yeah. Second animations. This or the second? This is the second. Okay. Uh, the, the problem I see is that uh, the first example. Yeah. You need to cause the static. Uh, static. 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 Yeah, yeah. And That's the because static. our helpers are a bit particular. Uh, they are not static classes because some helpers have also local variables to improve the speed of, uh, of the execution of some functions. So you actually can do or the static call with the double call with as in here. So this is valid because get the other images is a static. Call. But since uh, this class here is not static, you can also call uh, Tienda helper product get instance and have a local object with that uh, particular object in, the, in a variable to use it in multiple places in your code. In this case, it's not necessary to do that. But, for example, currency conversions has some parameters inside the outer, like the currency you are using and how many decimal values you have to use. So, instead of having one helper method, which every time you call it has to query the database to know how many, uh, which currency you are using or such things, uh, you instantiate the class one time, load all the configuration variables, and then call yeah, the, the method. No, 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 no. Okay. It's a bit strange, but it's not okay to do it both methods. Yeah, yeah, I know that's not... Uh, how it sh is supposed to be. It does not only take a strict one. No, it does validate it. Tienda validates everything. Completely. If you try to run here in my localhost, Tienda runs on EO 
and doesn't make any difference. I know it sounds strange, but in some things it's very useful. The puzzle? The double dot, the... the double dot notation. No. Yeah, and don't no, remember how many images. The puzzle is just a setting, but so you don't get a real product, a real object, but you don't have the attributes to the object. So you just call a double method. Yeah. Not the object. It can be puzzle, but it's a lot harder to write when you want to. Exactly. But the problem you get into when you're doing strict is it won't let you call it a static, just any old class. Once you start getting into strict, you have to declare the class as a static, and that's not all dynamic. Yeah, uh, I'll show you an example in the code so we can discuss on the code on the code of the other. Yeah. But the current we will do the sensitive task. Yeah, I know. In, in it's better for test. Yeah, if I just try to make that in PHP 5.3 uh, strict, uh, that would be a problem, yes. Okay, now this is the, 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 the biggest part of Tienda. Tienda focuses on plugins, since e-commerce websites need a lot of things. So, when you build a website, you usually want, I don't know, the Google Analytics for products, this shipping plugin, that payment plugin, uh, a lot of things. So what we actually did was to let developers extend Tienda free. How did we do that? We built a, a plugin uh, class tree that will allow the developers to, do, to add functionalities to Tienda. The first class is this one, Tienda plugin base, which extends the J plugin and offers other than the normal JPLG methods. Template override support, so if you load uh, view classes uh, in your plugin, they can be template override. Then we have Tienda shipping plugin, that's an interface with some other methods uh, for shipping plugins, so the, the get rate methods, uh, declare, just declares an abstract method for getting the rates. So the developers doesn't know which is the correct signature, signature for, the, for the function. Same thing for the payment plugin base class. So the base class for all the payment plugins. And then there are other two different plugins. The record plugin is one of the most powerful because it handles all the reporting to the user. So views, fetching data, and I don't know, uh, building the query, it's all handled by the, this plugin, so, so the, the base plugin. When you write a record plugin, you just have to say on which table we want to make the report and which are the, what are the filters, nothing else. So about 40 lines, lines of code and you have a complete record plugin. So no views, no lists, no multiple files, like one hour you can do a record plugin. So, that said, we have also a Tienda tool plugin, which actually we use for the migration of plugins most of the time. So like, I want to migrate Virtumart from, from Virtumart to Tienda. What we have done is uh, uh, build a step-by-step uh, -step process. So, this plugin uh, handles the various steps, so you don't have to check the URL variable to see if you are in the first step or in the second step, check the, the J request data. All, all, the, all of that is handled by this plugin. You just have to write uh, the fields you want the user to, to, to compile, such as database, file to upload, uh, such, and map fields between the two installation and the rest is handled by this one. Another slide, so <laughs> I'm sorry about this argument is very good. Let's see if I can get to that link. We have a couple of plugins in Tienda. Let me see if I can show you, show you the list. This is a manually generated uh, list of plugins, so it's not complete, but just to give you an idea on the number. Okay, 
115. But as you can see here, we have this kind of event, onload suffix. So for example, if in Tienda we have 40 classes, products, orders, users, customers, details, and such, we will have onload products, onload orders, onload etc. Of this kind of events, we have 10 types. So if you make a couple of operations, you should get something like this. So we have 400 event triggers in Tienda. So when you build like, something for Tienda, you can just edit it with a plugin because they are everywhere. For example, when you load, uh, when you use a JTable child class, you can inject into before the loading, after the loading, before the saving, after the saving, before the binding, after the binding, and such. So you can do almost everything. Okay, another cool thing about the plugins in Tienda is that you can call a plugin method by an URL. So let's say you have built a cool function in your plugin that shows the user something with a, with a view, for example. You can access to that view from a simple URL. Example is this. So what this URL does is go to uh, uh, the plugin, plugin name and call the function plugin method and show that inside the component frame. That way you could, from a plugin, show the user anything. For example, our shipping administration area and the record tools are all handled by this method. So we actually have written all the reports inside a plugin, not a NPC structure inside the company. That said, just to make a summary of what I said, we can uh, XML override the template files if you use this method. So if inside your plugin you output to the user using this uh, get layout file name, this will fetch the HTML file inside the tmpl subfolder and display it to the users. And that file will be template variable. So if you if you place in your template subfolder, you place plugins, uh, plugin group, plugin name, file name, you will have an override of your template of your plugin views. Plus Every plugin has its own MVC structure. That's a bit awkward because it's an application within an application. But it's useful for, uh, uh, we use it, for example, on the shipping plugins. The standard rate shipping plugins needs the user to, I don't know, add a courier, add a rate, add a, you can say, I don't know, uh, if the order is between 0 and 90 dollars, make the user pay 5 euros. It needs an interface for that. So a controller that says to, the, to a table, a model that fetch the data, and, and so on. So in a plugin, you can have controller, model, table, and view. The plugin itself will load it and in, inject, it, inject it into the Tienda code when you put it. So that's all done by Tienda automatically. So I just want to know if someone has some ideas on a plugin. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Me too. Uh, one problem, for example, is uh, a local shop. A local shop. Can yeah. it to, to a couple of zip uh, zones. Yeah. Not, 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 uh, not a, a website, a 
Yeah, it's not on the website, but uh, uh, it's a delivery service for yes. a Yeah, okay. So you need a shipping plugin for that, for example? Or? Uh, uh, yes, uh, yeah, shipping, yeah. So when you have arrived at checkout, you need to say in which store, for example, you want to pick up your... Uh, uh, the customer is only one store. It's, for example, in Kankale. No, I didn't, I didn't get it. Uh, let's, let's say the customer, uh, the shop owner, yeah. has one shop, yeah. let's say here in Kankawa. Okay. And he's delivering uh, in a circle of 20 kilometers. That's okay. How do I...? Uh, you want to limit the yeah. users from buying that. Uh, uh, I see various ways. Uh, it depends on how do you want to filter the users. So you can geolocalize the AD, but it's not very good since it could be in Monaco with the Bicycle, for example. Uh, Bicycle code. Bicycle code. That's already possible, I think, in Tienda. Because we have edited the um, standard shipping plugin to support sub geo zones. So if you know how Tienda manages the, the shipping zones, you have you just pick up zones in the world, like New York, Kerkrad, and Maastricht and such, put them together in a, in a thing called GeoZone, and use them to say, okay, all the people inside this get this price for shipping. Yeah, but then I've got uh, to, to get the zone a special thing. No, no, in, in that view, you can also filter on zip code. Yeah, but uh, let's extend the problem. Okay. Uh, we deliver free within the 20 kilometers range and charge uh, 5 ah, euros okay. for 40 kilometers. That's okay. <laughs> That's not simple because we have to know how to calculate the distance between the. Yeah, the, the, I, 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 let's say you, 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 okay. you already let's know let's how to do that. Yeah, okay. we, let's look at the simple simplest. Okay. So, you can write a shipping plugin dedicated for that. Check but I have, I've got the user, I've got the, to, to name those zones? No, no, I, in, this case, this case, no in this case, I'll, I'll build a custom plugin. Okay. So I just take the standard shipping plugin, copy it to another plugin, so I have a new instance of it, rename it, and build the, the rates using your specification. So, uh, check in where the user, in, user is in, in which jail zone, in which zip code, and if he is in my zip code list, for example, okay, give him the rate, otherwise, it will have an empty rate, so no rates is available, and, uh, and the user cannot, cannot have the shipping for that one. Okay. That's an idea I can show you how that's done. Mm -hmm. in a plugin, for example. It's a bit complicated, so I don't know if we can finish it by the end. Yeah, but I think I get the idea. Yeah. By the end of the last, at the end of the So, someone else. I will make an example. That guy over there, Mark, as he's been building for a client on his uh, website for a um, bookshop. So, uh, what his client wanted was uh, he had two uh, big companies that uh, uh, I don't know how to explain that uh, give him the give him the books that he sold. The number of the books are like one hundred thousand books, so he cannot just insert them into his tier of maze. It takes forever. So what he does is use a web service that they, on a daily basis imports the product from their website service. And that's two plugins, one for each of the two uh, companies that uh, he has as a reseller. Uh, so the first one imports the first company, the second one, the second company using, using two different protocols. One is a REST web service and the other is a, is a mess, it's an XML file the plugin just runs on a daily basis, parse the files, 
and save the products into the TNA database. Downloading images, setting prices, etc. When that's done, the, users, uh, the, the user has the products in, in his website and can buy them. When you click OK, I want to buy this, the order will, is sent to the respective company from which he has bought the books with another plugin. So I wrote a plugin for him that uh, just takes the order, check if the product is from one or the other company, if check the company, send the order to the company, the company will process the order, answer me, and I'll update the TNA order status automatically. So actually, his customer never touches the order management in the web store, because everything is managed automatically. This kind of thing is possible with this case a bit particular because the web service is complicated so it takes time. But ideally it's quite simple. Just give some numbers. I don't remember anymore, Mark. The total number of products. Uh, by the end of this uh, week uh, 1.6, 1.8 million products. In the database. We have tweaked the end a bit because when you have that many products on a MySQL database, it tends to become a bit slow. So we have tweaked the end up, and now, with, uh, as of now, we are at 200,000 products inserted, and the site is running without any problem. So even for big websites, you can use the end up without any problem. It's a Okay, so... Okay, question? I have a question for downloadable products. And From download? Downloadable products. Ah, okay, yeah. And then before you can actually download it, you have to submit information like a website URL. Do you have software which is uh, URL specific? Uh, oh, downloadable products in Kenya. For now, it's managed by uploading the product to, the, to a server. Okay. So you have to create a product, saying to Tienda that that product is uh, actually a downloadable product. So after the user has uh, bought the product, the product, a link will be shown to them to download that product. And but it's not possible remotely. That step is it possible to create a plugin then? Yeah, for sure. Instead of being able that could be an example. This is quite easy, I can just write the plugin and the web should be the good for checking or just some kind of that. So I can send you a mail with what I want. Yeah, if you want we can also I can show you an example. So questions? I've got the other one. Yeah. Uh, European taxes. Yeah. Ah uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Ital Italian so <laughs> I'm in that kind of problem. Okay, uh, the taxes are one of the problems on an e-commerce website. Tienda manages taxes quite well uh, if we compare it to, for example, Virtual. Because it's based on geo zones, so actually you decide on which states, on which local, uh, cities you apply the tax. Also, it supports multiple lines geo taxes, taxes, so if you have two different taxes, you can sum them up and the system will show two different lines, three different lines, four different lines, sum all the things up and do all the calculations. How does it feel something to the yeah. company? Yeah. The tax yeah. Uh, yeah. If you are inside the European Union, you have to pay that. I know the problem. Uh, as of now, there is a plugin that does that kind of processing. What does the plugin do? Well, the plugin simply checks the, um, and does a, a lot of things. One of those is uh, on the billing address, if there is a company name, check if there is a path that ID. Yeah. That done, uh, if the zones are inside the European Union, which you have to define as a geo zone, because every time European Union has a new uh, a new country, you can just plug it in. And that done, uh, if 
the customer is a company, so it has company plus flat ID, uh, and the country of the billing address is inside that uh, list just uh, adds the taxes, otherwise remove the taxes, which means simply order tax equal zero. No special... Does it actually link to the VAT database? No, that's, that could be done very easily though, There's because the there is a plugin event, but another plugin event that is fired before when you check the addresses. So for it, it should be something like uh, on validate address building or building address something okay. like that. And you have in a plugin all the data in the, in the address, so you should just call an external uh, web service for checking that or calling your local function. That was very well known that the Italian VAT numbers are Yeah, not it's a no don't work. Yeah. I just rented a server in uh, <coughs> from Black Space in America and my party wasn't validated. I had to call the customer service for that. Uh, that another cool example we could do that now. Uh, there was another question. Yours for me. Yeah, um, yeah again a pizza store. Yeah, yeah. pizza shop. Um, if you buy a blank pizza, and uh, we'll choose what you would like on it. So you actually are buying a support uh, base? Yes. Yeah, I, I want uh, two times tuna, and uh, some chogis, and okay. cheese. Uh, how do I do that? It's, uh, it's clear, mm -hmm. I know how to do it if, if it only might be one. Yeah. But uh, if I want With the a double portion of tuna, for example. Ah, that's okay. I have a few questions. Uh, I think with attributes you can do something like that. But maybe... I have to check that. It's a cool idea. You should add it as a feature request. With grouped products and attributes you should be able to do that kind of thing. That's quite advanced, so I don't have the time. You can speak about it at the end of the kilo. Someone has the time, how much time do I have? So I have a uh, quarter hour? Quarter hour. Quarter hour. Quarter hour. Quarter hour. Quarter hour. Okay. So, uh, no? Second, I put that in my double screen. So it's a copy of the trunk repository. So you can just mess it up if you want, commit, download, don't worry, it's there for you. So this is a structure of Tienda companies. As you can see, there is quite a bit of plugins, modules, and stuff like that. In the admin area, you have uh, these are the main classes, and as I said before, there are about 40 of them. So it's quite a big problem. Just to make an example of plugin that could be interesting. Second, that I find it in this. Okay, this I made for example before leaving. Okay. Um, maybe I can use one of your two ideas. One was the validation of the VAT number, right? And the other was the number of number. The which one? I uh, yeah, the simple one. Uh, the simple one is uh, the sub Ah, uh, yeah. Ideas. Now maybe it's faster to use this uh, idea. Okay. As I said before, 
we load manually the base class to avoid loading the thing that lagging base once every <coughs> yeah. Then we extend this. We just name the plugin as in Zumba and use this as a unique reference to the name. So this is because we can use the URL method I showed you before. Okay, so just delete this, which is not useful. And I have to find the name of the event I was speaking about before, which is uh, here. <coughs> I can't see my entire structure. Validate. I'm sorry, but 800 pixels aren't enough for coding. Okay. This is the plugin event. So on validate select shipping is triggered after all the normal TMA checks on the billing and shipping addresses, uh, but before going on with the checkout process. What it does is call this method with the submitted values, which is just all the, the, the data in the billing, shipping forms plus the, the selected shipping rate from the courier. So if I just do this function on my data select shipping and data okay so what I can do here is just check check the form field for uh, the bet ID, for example, it should be uh, I go by by heart. Uh, as that ID is as data uh, should be something like billing tax uh, number. You can find the correct name in the view. It should be something like this. Building underscore. So when you have this, you can do if as uh, as that. Uh, as maybe I have a helper method locally, so is valid as that ID. True. Else, return false. This method is valid. Could be anything: a web service call, a local function in copy paste from PHP.net, or whatever you want. Function is valid. Yes. Valid. So for now we just do this, very easy. So what the system does is actually, and this is a plugin, so if you package it as a PHP plus XML, install it through the Joomla package manager, I enable it, it's already ready for publishing. What the system does on checkout is call all the plugins with uh, this event and if any of them has uh, oh actually okay any of them any of them has an error stop I made a mistake in the code with, because actually 
you have to return an array. So, because you want to also say, 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 you have, say to the user, why? Yeah, it was triggered. So, what you do is, to, is something like MS uh, error. If this is valid, the error is. There isn't any error, so the response, response message is empty, and that's it. In this case, instead, the error is has happened, so you can say something like that I'm not using a language constant is not correct and then adjust the list the system will use will see that error is one so simply use the message you have created push it by, via through Ajax in the user page and stops the, the full wording on the page so if even one of the checking plugins fails all, this, all the checkout process is blocked Questions or on the line? Oh. So I just warn you about. Ah, yeah. I take it you could also just make it right that if you don't get a valid VAT number, yeah, you can pay your taxes. Just check the SDR way to treat Yeah, one check would be uh, something like this. For example, if as the other line trim as ID return true T not true else no and return false this just the most spaces checking if it is empty and if it's empty if you want to, to uh, return false as error in both cases, in order to continue, but charge taxes. No, I didn't understand that. Um, if the event ID is not valid, ah, okay. uh, so uh, I continue with the process. Yeah. And uh, just this is actually not done in this event, but on the order same. So for that, I will use an on before store order store method. Which I've checked on it. Yeah, you have to check it in. So you check it, and yeah. if it's correct, you have saved it. And then keep it in the space of this. Yeah, in that means. So in the order uh, object, in each step of the channel, you have this information. Because you have the button that I need on the image. Image step. For example, you are saving the order, you can say if the user has entered that ID in the order. Even when you are storing the order. I have nothing explained in the same way. Because this is a check on a, on a normal form input. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Okay. But uh, if I say, okay, what you said is wrong, I don't accept it. But we go on. Uh, you can do that by using J factory in Q message. J application in Q message. Because would you just clear it there here and then if you don't have a bad tag shot? Well, yeah, but you didn't it. want to to stop the execution of the checkout, but like, leave the user a message. Like no, you no, haven't no, no, had no, 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 want to charge texts. Yeah. Instead of, of not. Yeah, you should use access by default. So if you haven't uh, entered the VET ID, the system just add the taxes automatically yeah. because you have defined the tax and, zones. And uh, on the other hand, uh, if the VET ID is correct, I, I set the tax to, to zero. Yeah. 
And you do that by doing um, on the. If this is when it bad ID, yes, I say uh, data text. No, you can do. You cannot do on this event, but you have to do on the before display uh, ordering for. But that event does not know what I have checked here. It does know what you have checked because it does have the order object. Which the whole object has not changed. Okay. So, so yes, because the order object stores the Boolean information. Uh, when this is a term, okay. Yeah, so let's, let's, let's order that. Those cases which are true, uh, false. Okay, this is false. Okay, both, both cases. Both cases. If and the else part. Okay. Both return false. No, you cannot return false because if you return false, the system blocks. No, there's no error. Error is false. Okay. okay. So it's only rest. Well, uh, rest. So, okay. and when I have to order the data, then you.